But so we came in and we did 20 zombies and they were uh, dance 9411, dance 411, that organization. So these are all professional dancers. They're like up there with the Atlanta Ballet and and they train, they learn Thriller, which you can't hear audio, but this is the Thriller dance. And they train for like three weeks. They knew it perfectly. And so all of a sudden the president was speaking and you hear this girl screaming. We had to hire this girl who screamed really well. She was a um, horror film screamer, you know, so they're like, ah! you know, so she comes running through the auditorium. He's like, he's the president of the school. He's done some girl screaming in his audience. Or the outside, whatever they call that. The <laughs> auditorium that they have an outside, I don't know if you've ever been there, but they have an outside it's auditorium. Huge. And, and she comes screaming, like there. running at full speed. And all of a sudden zombies started coming onto the, from all around. We had them climbing, now, see well, the wall. Now while they were up here? They were coming over the wall. They are coming down. Each themed. If you look, you'll see different themes. Uh, we have in the, the prom front. queen, of course. Yeah, let me go over here. Yeah, in the front here, we've got Desiree, the, the leader. Queen. Uh, we got the prom king over here. In the white, he's in the white suit. Uh, let's see, we, back here, we've got the 50s uh, uh, cheerleader. Yeah. And uh, over here, this guy we was bit by a shark. We have the housewife. <laughs> we have the little girl in her pajamas. The little pajamas. girl in her pajamas with the big bow. And. Uh, you got a cowgirl over here, and there they go, heading off. The best part, though, in my opinion, was the actual prom king and queen, because when they, uh, when they started, he was dragging the Here's prom the queen. Here's the start, when they're coming down. <laughs> he literally drug her off up the stairs again, and she just, like that. And, and we even had the two Trekkie geeks, you know, that yeah. were, you know, had the... It's oh, fun. yeah, because when he was leaving, he was doing the whole... Yeah, they were like doing that. the live long and prosper. He had the nerd glasses on and the whole deal. And we had the librarian. She's the one with the hair that goes like this with the glasses. So it was funny. We had... We were um, not in charge of recording it, though. <laughs> I wish we had the sound. You could hear the thriller and... Like up, up, really. the, yeah. uh, these were just people that were there with their phones doing it, and you actually hear all their talk <laughs> on the phones. It was like, oh, this is wonderful. We had the businessman, too, and... But yeah, these were, we actually, students, of course, there's like 50 phones, you know, as soon as it yeah. started. The students didn't know this was going to happen either. So it's just the administration. And all of a sudden this started and everyone was like, what's going on? But and these are some of the actual costumes fun. from that scene. And uh, let's go ahead and get on into this here. Um, as you can see, these are some of the 20 zombies that we did. I don't know which one was wearing the green. Uh, I think the green was the explorer girl, with the cowgirl. Oh, uh, was that the, that and that? It was I think this. I think this is the yeah. And, we had uh, the naturalist. She was you the You know, it's on the back. Uh, to get this, this is bleach in there. Uh, we what we ended up doing is you start with the shredding part, okay? Well, you go to the thrift store. Well, yeah, the thrift store's first. Or any old place, whenever you any go place, there. So you have old clothes. Ask friends. Do you have clothes you're giving away that don't fit? That don't. Of course, it depends what kind of zombies you're going for. That's what we were going to get to, is a theme. Make sure you go in, you've got your themes already written out because you don't want to get there and we'll, you can change up once you got it, but you have to have somewhere to start. So start with your theme. But once you get your clothes, then we get to the shredding part, okay? That's one of the very first things you want to start doing. Now, you can get a pair of scissors and go to chop it, but that's only one way of actually a person getting hurt, okay? Zombies are far less likely to have big sword cuts out of the stuff. So scissors, not your best choice for shredding. Okay, a much better way is to actually naturally pull apart a little bit. Some of these also, you'll destroy the whole piece if you just do that. So to get some of the cuts and stuff that we did, one of the methods that I like to do is the twist. You wanna do it on this right here? Mm -hmm. You hold it and I'll, I'll do the twist. Yeah, because you have to think a zombie's not gonna the way they walk, they don't care. They walk through anything. Yeah. And so they're not going to have nice clean cuts unless they get it caught on a fence. They get it trips over, they trip we usually, over chairs. They, you know, they we usually care. cover this in our zombie school. And uh, it, it, like she said, you know, this the injuries and stuff, the, why he shambles, it's not because of rigor mortis. Uh, the, uh, usually it's because they're breaking their legs and stuff when they're falling off of things as they're traveling. So you get you a nice good twist on there, and then you get, this is just a, uh, a metal saw cut through pipes, and you can scrap with it like that, it's one way, or you can literally hack into it. Now I can cut, just cut straight off a piece like that, 
but I like to go down it and what you end up with is a tatter it's a nice shredded piece and you get more natural holes more stringy stuff the kind of tatters you'd have natural you can't really see very well in that one because you have to think there, uh, of course, depending on the types of zombies, there's new zombies who just turn zombie, and then there's the ones who have been around forever, and yeah. they had they've been r walking through things, blood. Do you stuff see these kind of tatters? Them. That's more what you kind of get with, with us. Yeah. Now some of these are cut, like you start with a cut and then you shred from that. There's a nice tatter on the shoulder there too. Uh, all right. What else do we have? You can do it with a pair of scissors on some of them. You can just take scrape down with the scissors. Um, but like I said, you want to be careful not to just trim things. Um, there is a technique for getting those, the ones Save. on this. Yeah. Was it this one? I think this is it. And I basically just bundled it up really tight again. And I took the scissors themselves and I just, just went quick chops with it. Um, but you still have to, to, to rag it up. Hey, with with, a, with the other knife after you're done with that. You got some on that one? Well, this was actually a werewolf. We could actually tatter that more if you wanted. Well, this was actually not a zombie shirt. This was uh, for a werewolf character that we did. So you can see it's, it has the blood, but it's a little different because he has those, you know, the claws and he's dealing with that. Now, one of the things you want to make uh, sure of is when you're doing this, we did this at, uh, at my mom's house. <laughs> we got us a big plastic tub and we went out on the front porch because there's so many of them, you can't do them individually. Now, some places that have the money, uh, big uh, uh, shops and stuff that do this, they're gonna take a, a dryer that's dedicated just to this kind of stuff, oh, and they're no. gonna put rocks in it and let it tumble these things out. Now, I don't suggest that because unless you have the money to buy a new dryer, that's okay. a very you know expensive way of doing this. You can literally take the clothes and you can beat them with rocks on you know, a, a surface that's okay to do that with. Uh, also, we have, um, I believe this is a paring knife. I could be wrong. Um, so this one has, it's actually really sharp on both sides. This is a great tool for your kit for distressing clothes. Um, also, the all famous cheese shredder, cheese shredder yeah. um, which you can get at the dollar store. And then you don't feel like if you break it or something or if it goes really dull, that you wasted a lot of money, hit the dollar store. This one's a, uh, it's basically a look, I'm not sure exactly what this saw is used for. I think it's actually used for foam, cutting big sheets of styrofoam and stuff. But uh, it works great on the clothes. Uh, also your scrub brush, you need, uh, it's good if you have the really hard bristle kind. Yeah. Because you want to um, fluff up the fibers, rip them a little bit. You want to be rough on them. Um, this actually is pretty hard on both sides. But this is a great thing to have too. Again, dollar store, you can hit the dollar store for it. Now chemicals, moving on to that. And you'll use this for when you're doing the chemicals and the coloring as well. So you can use this double, yes. Uh, question. Yeah. Jeans? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Jeans actually are very easy and fun to work with. We did that stuff back in high school. And they school. look good with the color, you know, jeans. You do the twist on those, you'll get some great you know, shreds and you'll get the nice string and stuff. But uh, if you want it for something that you're gonna wear a lot of, you might wanna go back and stitch around the wound on there so that you know that it doesn't get bigger. Uh, especially when actors are gonna put their foot in there, a lot of times they'll catch on that and they'll rip it all the way down. It's very important that you help dress the actors. Don't just throw the stuff at them. Half of them yeah. don't even know how it works. Uh, when you get done with a good shred, uh, we had a dress that a, a girl was going to wear and she quickly understood that she had to wear underwear with it because as she, that one that the main character is in, the black one, uh, uh, the black dress that she's wearing is very tattered. And unfortunately when we were making it, you don't really think about some of the positioning because you get in a hurry when you got 20 of them, you have a very little bit amount of time. Uh, and the actors won't like, know oh. that. You it's know, your suddenly, responsibility to make sure that you tell them wear i mean Your hopefully they'll wear undergarments anyway but yeah you need to say you need to wear undergarments and you have to understand too when you're dressing zombies for example you know if if they're wearing a skirt if it's a woman she's wearing especially a short skirt like her you're going to have to do their legs too as a makeup artist now you're going to be you know we doing a came lot. around that we said okay we're, it's going to be hard enough to do all their faces uh in the short amount of time that we're going to have to do this so the way we came up around this was we used stockings 
uh, we took the stockings and we did little tears in them, little shreds in those, and there's some color in them, but that basically made it look like their skin was disrupted. If you put makeup on dancers, they will literally pull it apart. So you have to use cloth a lot of times on this stuff. And you want non-shiny yeah. pantyhose. Not, yeah. not the lustery, pretty kind. You want the dull, like the nudes, you know, are really dull looking sometimes. They make zombie flesh stockings we found, but that's if you've got a budget because yeah, they get pricey. Expensive. One person's okay, 20 people, not in the not budget. <laughs> we had a budget, but not. They're like 12 bucks a piece much, on those yeah. things. Um, you can also do add-ons. Um, when you get your outfit, if you want it more shredded than it is, you can add stuff like this. This is cheesecloth, and it's called beef cheesecloth. There's all kinds of cheesecloth out there. Um, it's so much fun to work with. It comes in white, and then uh, it's just, well, just white. They're, they're, most of them are white. They don't have any other colors, and then you dye them. Well, you can actually get these now. They're they do have any selling colors? them at the dollar store in, in like a green, like a mossy green color. I haven't seen that. Yeah. Well, anyway, as you can see, you can pull holes into it and you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, one of the most popular things I use it for is when I do uh, old outfits uh, where you wear top hats and, or pirates and uh, you basically make your little uh, shredded uh, neckerchief thing. And so, you know, Captain, you know, you got this. You can also, for like the ghosty type outfits or if you want uh, Oliver Twist, type of thing going on. Vampire. Vampire, if you're an old vampire, he's not really up on the fashion trends, yes. But you got the ends of the clothes. Now you want this shorter than this, but this kind of looks like the shirt came out and just over the years he's just shredded it, you know. Uh, you can use this for gypsy belts, uh, or you can just take little pieces of it and you can tie it into their hair. You can tie it off to little holes that are already on there. I still have the green thing on that one. Mm -hmm. the, the tag thing from the store. There it is. No, we thought that was funny, remember? Oh, left on there? Yeah. <laughs> um, also with these, if you have a character that's wearing a latex mask or any kind of mask and it stops right here, well, that's oh. what these are great for is you can yeah. actually tie them around. We do that a lot at Netherworld. You tie them around the neck, you know, and leave, Washing leave them, them hanging makes them kind of curl up like this, so you have to kind of spread them back out. I actually used this to make a dress for one of my models once, and she was completely covered in this stuff. And surprisingly enough, even though it's absolutely see-through, it uh, is enough that you can't see it through on the pictures. Uh, it just looks like she's wearing a regular dress, but then you can turn an angle and then suddenly, ha-ha. And we're do I'm actually doing a costume right now um, for It's a Ghost character, because I do oh, a yeah, cemetery yeah, yeah. photo shoot every year um, for a group of photographers. And we're using this to make the ghost outfit like you, you wear your base. So it's a great Halloween costume as well. And you can add these to what any Halloween costumes and make them better. Um, and it's like they're going all the way down. Like I'm just uh, falling apart and it's, everything's hanging and um, looks mossy. And I sometimes also put this into stuff like this sign right here. This has actually got it in there. If you look at it really close, you'll see it kind of in the background and it gives it stability, gives it strength to it. Um, and uh, if you want to put this on somebody, you can do the same thing, you can put it on there their body and then put latex over it and you have this weird shredded skin muscle kind of stuff especially if it's the right color like this right here is a real good meat color you know this would be an old meat type color I could put my fingers through this and have it you know around my hands uh, we've also seen people use this for mummies doing mm -hmm. the wraps lots of mummy costumes now we do the coloring yes um, we kind of did them all at once because for zombies, you're not, you don't have to be careful. <laughs> uh, uh, the, uh, what I said yesterday about chaos on the face also applies to your clothes. Make sure that when you put color and things in here, you're not fooling, uh, trying a pattern. This is happening very unnaturally and it should look chaotic, uh, stuff bumped and stuff. You cannot just go, oh, a little here, a little over on the leg because people will see that and they'll start seeing it in all your outfits and suddenly it looks more like a polka dot, mm -hmm. you know, an Which we've one. noticed in movies. We're oh, like, yeah, all the time. I know that makeup artist did that exact same, those five outfits, because it looks exactly the same. I wanted this one to kind of look, you know, somewhere between battery acid to, and there's some materials. This material did not want to cooperate with us. It does not shred yeah. well. You have to consider <laughs> the material, like this one's 100% cotton. Um, you have to consider wool, 
wool doesn't take a lot of color, does, you know, it's so thick. And, and the bleach so. doesn't want to set in. It'll mm -hmm. sit on top of it. That's okay. Bleach will do its job. Put this in the bleach, let it sit. Okay, I think, what do we have, like 10 minutes and then we started getting color out of it? Yeah, sometimes it depends on the Because it'll just pool depth. on this kind. It doesn't want to sink in. It's, it's, this is made for going into water, you know. That stuff in this shirt. See, now this is a really thin one. This is 100% cotton. Yeah, same so here. So this is actually bleach, and then we added color so it looks like mold. Yeah, and what we did is we took the sprayers. He's an old zombie. Uh, <laughs> and you, you want to get sprayers just for this job because you'll ruin these things. Uh, the different colors and stuff, sometimes it'll chunk up and get inside of there. I don't even know if does the sprayer still work? No. Probably hey, not. it does still work. Yay. So you can see the, see the splatter effect? Don't get it on me. Right there. The blue splatter. Now you get that mold kind of look to it. And this is something, actually, when I worked on The Walking Dead, um, they use these oh, bottles. Hundreds and of they them. Have, uh, they have tons and tons of extras. So what they do is when they're distressing clothes or you're in costume, you have your makeup done, they'll go down the line of extras and use these squirt bottles. And actually, I don't recommend it's an alcohol-based paint. Um, we would just recommend water, unless you're a professional, because that can the vapors can get pretty strong. <laughs> but um, you just they go down each person and literally just squirt their legs. They had a blood bottle, they had an oil bottle, yeah. they had like five bottles: blood, blood, oil, paint. And there was yellow. Some, yeah, it was fluids. like a yellowish. Something. <laughs> and they would literally just squirt your whole body down before you go on set. And a lot of them, they're think. I mean, you should do this too. You're thinking. When you're doing it, like I said, uh, there's got to be a reason for it. Why is it like this? You know, is this appropriate color for this person? Uh, what happened to them? Um, here's a problem. If you use a lot of blood stuff, uh, the stuff that's it's supposed to be blood or fake blood, you're going to get a weird pink color. Yeah. Okay. Now, that this didn't happen that. until after it went through the wash later on. But sometimes when you're out there, you're going to get that, and suddenly your wound doesn't look real anymore. And we were just watching something the other day, and there's this pink on it. It's oh, a friend yeah. of ours film. And uh, we were like, look at that blood. Like, yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> you know, especially on a white linen, and they're in a hospital, and you see this great blood come out, but then it's all pink when it's on them. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't look realistic at all. So uh, look into other things like chocolate syrup. Uh, the darker henna. colors look, turn to, tend to look if better. If you've ever worked with henna, henna looks like a dried, nasty brown blood stain. And it's awesome for this stuff, and it'll stay forever, you know. And if you want to do dirt and you're not spraying it on, then don't go roll around in the dirt. Oh, we no, had no, somebody, no, no, no. not to name names, but somebody that both of us respect greatly. They are a famous makeup special effects artist. And they said... And if you need your outfit dirty, just go get dirt. Go out and get dirt. We were like... No, you don't. On the don't set of Andersonville, that was there a was guys who actually artist. jumped out of line. Who. There was 2,000 people standing in line to get makeup and dirt and all this stuff. And I, there was like a group of four guys that were like 19. They were like, hey, we don't have to stay in line. We'll just go over here and yeah, rub dirt all over us. The dirt. And the ladies just tore them apart. Like, get out of here. Redo everything. <laughs> New outfits, the whole deal. First of all, dirt's dirty. Yeah. Like, you don't want to have that on your costume because you're going to wear that all day. And that might have bacteria in it. But most might important have, who knows, is that, dog feces especially in Georgia, we know. have little shale pieces. We have mm -hmm. crystal pieces. All of that is picked up by the cameras. So suddenly you, you look like you're a vampire in twilight, you mm -hmm. know. And you're like, oh, that's bad. Get out yeah, of there. Yeah, if they have these bright lights on you, like the interview down there, they had the bright lights. Those would pick up those flecks and shine, reflect. And they'd be like, what? what's on your outfit? And then the makeup artist would have to come in. Time is money Yeah, on you're film. wasting time on the film. Here's a, yeah, this is bleaching on the jeans like you were asking about. And then... So Clorox bleach, cuts. you can get it at the dollar store. You can get your tools at the dollar store. You can do zombies. Zombies, this is, Georgia's the home of the zombies. So you can do zombies cheap, 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 cheap. Now, if you're doing things more like, you know, werewolves, vampires, things like that, of course, makeup plays a lot into that. Right. And like vampires, of course, the teeth and um, costumes. If you use, we did use spray paint on a few of these. Mm -hmm. Spray paint is sticky, so you have to wait on it to dry and everything. And what kind you use is important also. They do, they do make fabric spray paint. I would suggest using that. Uh, but at the very least, if you're pulling the stuff out of your cabinet because you don't have any other choice, make sure it doesn't say gloss because gloss takes forever and it won't ever want to. It doesn't look good on camera. Yeah. Any questions so far? We've covered a lot. We're like just slammed with you guys with stuff. You have a question? Uh, 
Oh yeah. When yes. the reason why I mentioned chocolate syrup. Absolutely. In like 3D, when you're rolling or in, in the in old the movies, uh, uh, vampire movies, stuff like that of the past when they were black and white. The red did not translate correctly on black and white film. It just looked like a weird water. Um, so they had to do things like the makeup that a person wore was greenish. Uh, it was a pale green that they wore for highlights. The lipstick that the women wore that you see in all these beautiful women in these movies is actually a really disgusting red brick color. Um, and blood was actually chocolate, chocolate syrup. In Psycho. The movie Psycho, yeah. which is a classic for all of us horror fans, um, actually the they use chocolate syrup. The famous scene ee, 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 in yep. the shower, it was chocolate syrup because that was shot on black and white. So yeah, you do have to be careful about your. But your makeup artist should know the dip. Like if you're doing a squib or if, if, if there's gunshots, they should know. Especially working with the costumer, the makeup artists work with the costumers together because if they're wearing a certain color, they don't want to bring in this really bright blood because it'll look pink you know, on that, and so they don't want that effect, of course. And if there's no more questions, we're going to go move on to our next section, which is props. Any other costuming, distressing? Okay, we're going to move on to props. Okay. Props is generally my section, uh, and usually Andy will come to me and say, I'm doing an event. I need blah, blah. And then I yeah. work my butt off trying to figure out how to make that work. And then I make it, like, in two minutes just before she comes over. Um, so. <laughs> no, not the ice things. <laughs> Uh, some of them were very specific, like yeah. uh, she had to be a ice witch from the Narnia. From Narnia. Novels. Um, that's what this one was. Um, and this doing? This uh, crown uh, was a lot of fun to make. Uh, I used the fake snow that you use during the uh, our flocking, and you can you buy it in a putty it. form. And so I made the snow with that. It's got little sparkles into it. You can get that at Michael's, right? Yep, Joanne's Michael's or, Michael's uh, or seasonally, anywhere during the season. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing about it is it's supposed to be water soluble. So if I wanted to, I could probably take this whole thing apart uh, with that. But it's not the only thing. That is only used at the very end of your project. Never rely on something that's water soluble or whatever. Does the light it's work? actually, uh, I could try, but um, I used uh, just. Oh, yeah. uh, hot Here, glue gun so they can see it. and uh, the other one's gone remember it fell off. No, there's four of them the other part of the bed oh yeah I thought it fell off he put a light in it um, in case I needed it for luminosity which was a, a festival we did we did a it was a big so uh, parade out. downtown parade slash festival that was based on Alice in Wonderland but uh, a lot of famous people were there <laughs> and such and that's what this one was made unfortunately yeah. during their uh, event, the battery pack came off mm -hmm. on a loose wire, <laughs> but this has little lights hidden within it. And uh, I, know, I wish that was still. Similar principle. Instead Same of actually thing. making uh, goggles that went around, these goggles, when we got them, were just on this horrible string anyway. And I said, instead of doing that, why don't we just make the whole thing kind of a headpiece? And so this is just a little hair. Uh, uh, what you might call it there, barrette. And then I added the feathers. We kind of give that winged ear kind of anime thing. Uh, I added some ribbon. All of this is glued on here, very simply. I've also got some crinoline that I bought that you can buy any place where they sell little accents to things, uh, Hobby Lobby and such. Um, these are actually a really cheap pair of goggles that you can get at any hardware store. And then I've got a string of lights. That during the holiday season, they always have these battery pack lights laying around. Buy them up. If you like making costumes, buy them up. Get multiple colors, especially unrecognizable colors. And then depending on what you're trying to go with, if you want more of the steampunk theme, then you use more of the amber lights on that. So that's what there's on, this amber on. lights all over. Yeah. And then the ribbon is an accent. She can tie that or she can just leave it hanging. It's just for looks. That's, yeah, it doesn't light up. These and it's, were it's supposed meant to, be the to angle a little bit to the side to so give that more of a playful look to it like they're just casually thrown on that ribbon's caught can you pull that wire up there you go there you go. Yeah, ignore the black wire i know ignore the black wire it doesn't light up now but these are supposed to be like my straps to the um and this was for luminosity this was yeah. um we, we had a whole section of steampunk how many 20 steampunk was, people but there was hundreds of people there total i mean actors dancers and mm -hmm. You know, it was everything. a moving show through downtown. Now, that was Atlanta Ballet, was it not? 
Um, yes. Yeah. That, that when they came was. through, yeah. Um, this little hat right here with the very cleverly hidden death laser was <laughs> for one of my puppets. Uh, I make uh, dragon puppets. I mainly make the dragon puppets just for my own pleasure. Um, and then I wanted to go steampunk with the one female character I had. And so that was her little gun. And I ended up having people say, what is that, a steampunk unicorn? No! Put it, put it on your dragon She's and show deadly. Uh, that has to be pinned in, so I can't really just add it onto it. This is actually made for Andy. This was that her was hat steampunk. I made. And these little guys are so easy to make, and they're so much fun. Uh, you just go to Hobby Lobby, Michael's, any of those. They sell these little hats already pre-made. You can get uh, this size, or you can get it a little smaller than this. Uh, and then everything's just hot glue gunned on. Uh, the, all the ribbons and things like that. And then this is just a little button. You can get a pack of buttons for like five bucks, these little plastic guys. I've used those plastic buttons for everything. And you can, I know at Michael's, you can get a big bag of those buttons for yeah. like four bucks, yeah, like exactly. a huge bag. This is the, what I did with the puppets. Uh, I got a bunch of these uh, ones from Jurassic Park and the Godzilla. This is the, the baby Godzilla one. Uh, and I, re, I put doll eyes in their eyes right here. Um, these are a pair of horns that they were selling at one of the uh, uh, Eddie's Trick Shop, and then repainted the whole thing. And then I use a—I uh, have an oil-based paint uh, that my dad gave me. He's a, an artist up north, and uh, I got the whole thing to give it a sheen, to give it a, a kind of a, a, a draconic sheen. And I cut it apart so that I have more maneuverability, and so I can clean it. Uh, these things get really sweaty if you wear them a lot. And there's also cloth underneath the jaw here to keep your hand so you don't get any kind of uh, sores or whatever. This is a final uh, finished product. I made a zombie dragon years ago. And uh, he's a bit tattered by purpose. This is a, a, a really cool cloth that I found that has a dragon skin texture to it. They were throwing it away. They didn't even want to keep the stuff anymore. Um, I actually cut the rib cage into it and then I added the skin over it so it'd hang off of it. Uh, the horns, again, were a, a, just a set of horns. There, you, you ever seen the Renaissance horns that tie onto your head? These were like the, the corporate buy-at-the-store version of them with the plastic string around them and everything. And they're, they're pretty much useless in the purpose that they intended them for, but they fit great on the puppet. Uh, I used cotton and latex tissue to make him look like he's been wounded, maybe Someone shot an explosive uh, a crossbow bolt into his mouth and he blew up or something. Um, I tore out one of his eyes on this side. Uh, this eye has been replaced with a, a doll eye over here. And doll eyes, you can either get them in a pack at a, a, a hobby store. Uh, you can go to a taxidermy shop if there's any in your area. Um, but uh, the easiest way is to go to a thrift store, buy a bunch of stuffed animals that are worthless, and tear all their eyes out. <laughs> And, uh, or if you have old stuff down you're getting rid of. Yeah, they get ratty. You mm -hmm. don't want to hold on to those things because you don't know what kind of bugs and stuff are in them. Just cut them apart. Use them as pieces. Um, this little thing was a toy that someone uh, gave me a long time ago. It had been sitting in the bottom of a bucket somewhere at my house. Uh, what it was, you put your fingers in here and it had like little rubber bands and you would like fire the little darts out of it. But the rubber had been destroyed a long time ago. And so I gave it a new paint job. There's actually some scroll work that I carved into it. Uh, there's a little plant tape around it to give it a leather uh, look right here. Uh, and these are just little contact lens bottles that I filled with some goopy dye and uh, soap to give it a weird kind of chemical look to it. Um, and uh, they just fit in there perfectly. So I have this, this is a, like a vampire curse uh, removal thing. Uh, Let's see, this gun here was right off my stepdad's wall. After he passed away, I was like, well, that's mine now. So uh, it uh, was just a simple toy where it had like a little screen here. And I think it had, these were controls for it. And it was like Duck Hunt or something. Uh, now it looks like Mad Max can take it out and blow away zombies on the road. Um, it's already got a nice little weight in there to give it a realistic feel. Everybody likes to pump the thing. So you can watch uh, the toy stores, the dollar store, thrift stores go uh, and find garage toys. Garage sales. Garage sales. I mean, garage sales. You pass this piece of junk and you're like, just yeah. That's you sense, keep you know? your mind open to things. You gotta figure the big picture. So if you find a old blue piece of crap gun, you can change it. You can add. Does everybody stuff. know what plant tape is? Anybody? 
Mm. Plant, plant tape is literally plant tape. It's a plant tape, or it's a tape that you wrap around uh, uh, stuff. The, it's natural, it's self-adhering, uh, it's really thin, and you can find it at like any place that sells plants. Um, it, you see it on flowers sometimes when they're handed off. It's taped up around the bottom of it. But if you wrap it around certain things, you make it look like leather. Uh, you can, if you want it to be a little bit stronger, because if you leave it alone, it'll, it'll become harder. But uh, you can actually take like a, a little bit of clear paint and go around that, mm -hmm. nail polish. Nail polish, that clear kind of nail stuff. polish. Careful with uh, clear nail polish. I used it on a couple rubber masks years ago to make the teeth look more uh, shiny. Uh, however, it ages the latex quicker. Latex is a natural material and it breaks down over about mm -hmm. 10 years. Uh, you'll, you'll, yeah, your stuff will break down in like five years if you use uh, a chemical like that. Um, but you have to keep your, keep it open about things. Cause I know I did, um, Ripley from aliens at dragon con one year and we were like, what are we going to do for, she has the bullet, um, what do you call it? The belt the, yeah. or whatever. We we're like, Bandelier. I don't want to, you know, you can't bring real big old bullets into dragon con. So we were trying to figure out what could we do? So we went actually and found these little mini markers. Yeah. That if you think outside the box, and we painted them black or you no know, more of a. You just have to look black. enough like the character that people go and recognize. Oh, I know what that is. But we found those markers, painted them, and they look just like. Okay, like so many people stopped me going, "Oh my gosh, are those real bullets!" And she bought like, a couple guns no. <laughs> that she took over and said, "Here, make them." And uh, I made it into a uh, the, pulse, the gun, the pulse the, rifle, the pulse rifle yeah. with the flamethrower attached it to it. It was huge. It even had a little readout on it, and. Uh, so you just got to think outside the box and, and uh, obviously YouTube, you can find a lot of things, how to distress stuff, this skull paint is stuff, old. make stuff. This guy has been around since Silo X. Uh, I made him back in 93, 94, something like that. Uh, and you can see the stuff's actually held up pretty good. This is latex over uh, toilet tissue that's on here. It had a foam based skull, which I actually had to carve out the teeth because they didn't really do a great job at that. Uh, fortunately, this stuff's really easy to carve. What it is is that uh, um, uh, you, perhaps you've seen it at your house used for insulation. It's the foam that you inject in there and it, and then afterwards, if it gets on anything, you'll never get it off as it's hard. Well, you can carve that stuff mm -hmm. real easily with like a, uh, uh, one of those um, carving knives you use for the turkey, the electric knives. Um, Be careful. Yeah, <laughs> just caution on that, but yeah. Uh, but if it's already done for you, that's good. This is, like I said, uh, uh, toilet tissue that's been colored with red food coloring. That was it at the time. I didn't have anything extra. Uh, and then there is also cotton tissue on here to give it more of the uh, textured look to it. But, uh, and then I also carved out in the back here some claw marks like he's been through some damage. If you want to pass that around, you can take a closer look at it. Um, sometimes you get lucky. This is what we call... Uh, yeah, those are the fingernails there, the, the hands. The hands. We've used this for everything. This has been in so many movies. <laughs> and I think <laughs> These are zombie just false fingernails. Photo shoots. Just ladies' false fingernails. I use false fingernails for a lot of different things. If you look at the sign over here, this I made uh, two days ago. Uh, the teeth that are on this guy are not teeth at all. Those are actually Lee Press-On fingernails that have been carved into teeth. Andy actually wore a pair in one of our uh, photo shoots. Here's you can uh, play the... Yeah, it's on our... He has the picture. <laughs> it's on our thing here. This was actually our, for Ace the Zombie, they did a zombie commercial. If you see, if you saw the little baby one, that was the, <laughs> the youngest zombie I've ever had to make. <laughs> I had to do this little tiny baby as a zombie. I almost feel guilty. <laughs> she was adorable, though. The other girl bit you, or bit her. Bit her, yeah. Is this it? I think so. Yeah. These are our nine cop effects. This is one of our reels. That was not a digital effect that splattered on the wall. That's just some of the effects that we've done. That's a, a Glock gun. We actually had but a girl it, back there that I fired it at the wall. I think it's coming up. I had to make an eyeball for her cheek. It's, hard, it's kind of dark, hard to see, but yeah. um, coming we up. We were not so, in charge of lighting on that. Yeah. Coming up, though, you'll see the picture of the vampire, um, and that's actually, well, there's the zombies. And this was for a commercial. Andy that's zombie. My zombie. There we go. <laughs> I didn't plan on being a zombie that day. They were like, we need an extra zombie. No, I was like, not that group. 
No, this is uh, two naked men eating a sa making a sandwich. They were they did the Halloween special. That's literally their podcast zombies. named Two Naked Men in a Sandwich. They're making not always zombies. It was yeah, yeah, they just did that. There, there it, is. it is. The teeth. And that's the girl from the uh, the, the teeth on that walk vampire uh, commercial. No, the vampire photo shoot were, were actually nails. Yeah, because <laughs> I didn't have my teeth with me. All right, uh, now a couple of these, like I said, if you're lucky enough, you have little items that you just look at and you go, that could be cool. You, if you ever had like a, a child come and was like, oh, I got this gun, and it's like something they found off the ground, you know, some weird thing, a squirrel, whatever. Um, this is completely found items. Uh, this is off a chandelier. There's some watch parts in here. Um, there's uh, knobs and more gears that I found in different clocks. Uh, this is a piece of PVC, or not PVC, but uh, pipe, like you have conduit. Uh, and uh, the rest is a chair leg. It was a chair leg went like that. Um, and then this was also like a little candelabra piece. And uh, the one thing is, though, when you try to make a steampunk weapon, I see this a lot. People will take just a collage of things and go, ha, now it's steampunk. And it just looks like a big pile of crap. And uh, uh, the reason why you can make something really nice is if you study antiques, go actually look at what antique pistols are shaped like and make it look like they have a function. Uh, all the little gears are here actually are really close together so they look like they actually work with each other. If you don't, then they're just gears sitting on there. Uh, now there are fashion people that just stick them on their outfits or have a little gears thing. That's fine, but if you wanna go for something that looks like it might have actually functioned, make sure it does kinda go together a little bit. <laughs> um, okay, we're getting towards the end of our time. Well, I want to do um, two more. Well, it's past one. That's okay. I'll just do this real quick. Does anyone have any questions so far? Because I know we cover like a lot of stuff. We pile a lot on you guys. Nope. Okay, good. Real quick, I have to jump through these real quick. Uh, this right here, uh, does anyone know what this was at any point? Right now, it's a mole man mask, kind of goes over the head and fits on like that. Mm -hmm. um, anybody recognize it? This was a blender. Like that. Let's see. Uh, see, when, you tell, when we tell them, everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah I totally see that. Yeah. Uh, this is a little bit harder. Now, this was from a toy that uh, was actually it's upside down, but the toy went right here, and it had little darts in it, and it was for some kind of spy thing for the uh, Nerf darts. Um, and now it's a nice tentacle nose. These right here were gears that I found in a washing machine. Can we put it on? Uh, uh, I don't, I don't think I you can. can. No, it's not very comfortable. Yeah, this was made to show how easy and quick some fix are. I literally wore this into the event. I had a hood and the whole deal. The hood was made from a, a, basically a sack that I just put a hole into, put it over my head, and it made that nice hoodie type deal. Uh, it was low enough that you couldn't see my real face into it. And this is just stapled together. I mean, this is just little belts and stuff like there. There's some zip ties. These are actually votive candle uh, metal things here. Mm -hmm. There's some gummy stuff behind it that you do tacking up things at school projects with. And these are little votive uh, uh, candles, the, the fake ones. And uh, the reason for that is at one time they actually lit up. So you had this little dot of light in the center of them. And uh, they just fit into the actual candle metal things. And there's your eyes. This is rope that's just covered in black tape. There's a little bit of wire in the rope, so I can actually give it a little bit of twist and stuff. But that was it. And this is like a toilet thing. It's a little dangly plunger, thing. plunger <laughs> deal, whatever it is. Uh, so you have and to think outside the box. You yeah, can't. a lot of Got a glue gun it, yeah. back there. <laughs> we love hot glue, hot glue guns. <laughs> yeah. Be careful with the hot glue guns. There's two different kinds. Uh, there's the little guys, and then there's the big guys. And uh, we have at uh, Netherworld, uh, we both work at Netherworld, and I had to fix something on one of my puppets, and I still have the wound right here, because someone disrupted me while I was doing it, and just a little drop fell on me, and I couldn't set down what I had. So it had about 30 seconds of burn time on me, while I was like, ah, ah, and then uh, I, I took the skin with it when it went. Uh. So it's very hot, be very careful. I can only say the consistency is kind of like if you ever had a Pop-Tart and the glucose comes off and you're like, oh, the little glucose. Like, that's about the same kind of heat really that you get from it. 
Uh, what did we miss? We get everything. We got our puppets. So. Yeah, we, got a we have our weird stuff. The wand didn't really light up, unfortunately. Yeah. No questions. There's no questions here. Yep. All right. Not even the actor scene. <laughs> Uh, that's what I was talking about earlier. Well, you can these lay. are actually uh, <laughs> these are the little uh, uh, fake uh, an, plastic things that you I have during Christmas. I was the queen Christmas. from Narnia. The so the icicles, the, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's the little friend. icicles are actually from a string of icicles that they have. Like that a you Christmas can hang up. string. And uh, they're hot glued together, just painstakingly one at a time, uh, to a barrette. This is for Dragon Con. A set of barrettes on the back. And then, so uh, he, ba he based it with just a headband, yeah. two headbands. And then there's a plastic piece yeah. that I added to that, and then there's a, uh, a little ornament that we had, and then it's just all of those things, just one at a time on there. And, then the and there's lights The in final it. part was I took the hodgepodge stuff that makes snow, it's that fake f flocking putty, uh, and uh, that's it. And I added these on there to give it more support to stay in the hair. Because it's very part. heavy. Yeah. Well, no, we talked well, about yeah. ways of doing it. And then me and Andy went to... We went to the craft store we and we're to? like, okay, what can we do here? And it, was a, it was the Christmas place. Where was that? Mm, it? Was, uh, Garden South. Garden, yeah. Garden South. They have all this ornaments and stuff. And the same thing with this guy. This is the wand from it. Um, you can get these cool wandy there. twigs uh, over at places, at home decorating places and stuff, the twisty ones that make really cool wands. And then, again, just one stick at a time just put them on there different little little angles and uh you got your major big ones at the end this was to look like when the ice hits it all it's kind of angling you know out ice like freezes. literally froze it all because i was the ice queen so it was have a pattern in mind you don't have to literally draw out your design ahead of times but you do want to have some idea of how it works uh when you start uh Is that it? i think that's everything well, oh done. i got one oh, other wait. piece one more. This oh, is a toy. Foot. What this was, I love this thing. I made this years ago. Uh, there was a toy that was out for kids where it was a dinosaur that you could take apart and stick him back together in different shapes and things. And uh, everything from the rib cages to his little feet uh, came apart <laughs> and he had the little plastic little doodads like that. So I just put them together and went, oh, it's a cool little sword knife thing. I used and, uh, that on something. Yeah, I've Some wrapped wire in it, and uh, I've used a, uh, a rub, a gold rub, which you can get at any craft store. Uh, they have gold and silver rubs, so you can do like that. And uh, then there's friendly plastic on it, and that's about it. So, so feel free to come up, look at the props. You can look at the costumes. If you have questions, we can answer them afterwards. But thank you guys so much for coming. We really appreciate Note it. Note that if you have a set, though, make it very clear. I want to say this as a prop master, that nobody touches your props. Uh, props should only be in the hands of the actor when they're using them. It's very inappropriate for anybody to touch props any other time unless mm -hmm. you're invited to. Uh, because they're easily destroyed. Yeah, or lost. And actors have no respect. They want to, they're thinking about the thing they're about to play, so they'll be, all right. And kids all right. have come up and touched, like, our makeup and stuff. I mean, they can get hurt. It's not just kids. On one of our sets, on and after, we had, I went and told everyone, don't touch the guns. Don't touch the guns. I found one of these old guys with the, down his pants, and I took, you know, two days coming up with a silencer for this thing, a fake silencer. Okay, it's made from like a can and taped and all this stuff. And uh, now it like, was down his pants in a 45 <laughs> degree like angle as he pulled like it out. Like this. Like, hey, down no. his pants. <laughs> Great. Broke that off. <laughs> no silencer today. So, so yes. We're done. Please. We're good. Thank you guys for Thank coming. You.